and welcome to our colleagues who are with us today and to all the colleagues who will see this in the future because yes, we are recording the program and we are posting it on our YouTube channel. I'm Deborah Ziska, I'm chair of ICOM MPR and uh, the International Committee for Marketing and Public Relations. And I am so excited to be with all of you today um, to have for this first webinar series, the first we've ever done actually. And it is, this is designed, this series is designed to help you and your team become agents of change in the new era of museums with our new museum definition. Many thanks go to Marcelo Mendez, Luis Marcelo Mendez, I'm sorry, Luis, our board member, who's been working hard to coordinate this series and to our former board members, uh, Lucy Mara Letelier of Brazil and Cecilia Martin of the United Kingdom, who co-led a very successful Manifesto Museums for Action workshop in Prague during ICOM's 26th and, uh, general conference. It was very well received by all of those who attended, and we have a report on our website. So um, I am going to move over to the chat room shortly, and there I will be posting links and emails for all of you to um, stay updated and involved in NPR's activities. We welcome your feedback and ideas. Please let us know if you have suggestions for topics and speakers for future webinars. And now I happily turn the program and the series over to my very able colleagues who have a very special guest from Costa Rica that they will be introducing. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming today. Thank you, Deborah. Um, do you want to introduce yourself, Lucimar, first? Yes, how are you, everyone? I'm glad you are all here. I think we are open today a series of um, debates and webinars led by the ICO NPR, as Deborah just said. So I'm very glad to be here. Well, I have been a board member of ICO NPR for six years. I was very glad to participate and collaborate with this lively community of ICO NPR. So I'm very glad to be here. I am the director of Regenera Museu which is basically a consultancy work with sustainability and the social impact of museums in Brazil and internationally as well. I come from a background of communications, marketing, fundraising, but also working with the social impact of museums and arts and culture as well. So I'm really glad to be here. I also would like to mention that I'm ICON Brazil board member, as this is an ICON community in a broader sense of um, working with museums and delivering change. So welcome everyone. I would like to hear your introduction, Cecilia. Thank you, Lucy Mara, and welcome everybody. It's a real pleasure to be here online for the first uh, webinar. Um, I'm Cecilia Martin, I'm a brand strategist. I work in the cultural sector and in, with museums. I'm a workshop facilitator and researcher, and I help organizations define themselves and connect with people in new ways, digital ways, participatory ways, and many more. I've been a, a member of ICOM NPR for over eight years now and a board member, but now I am just um, have the opportunity to be a member and we thought that it would be very important to keep board membership active and to keep the community active. And uh, to do so, we, we started in um, ICOM Prague and we had a, a very interesting opportunity to do a workshop with everyone because we thought it was very, very important for people to be able to, to share and collaborate and work together. So I'm gonna share with you a recap of a presentation of what we did back then, because what we want to do is to replicate the experience online. So this is a bit of an experiment. But before that, uh, I'm going to uh, share with you the presentation and then Lucy Mara is gonna talk to Eurice Weiss who had the opportunity to take part of the workshop and she's gonna share with us her experience of change making. So let me just quickly share my screen with you. Cecilia, can I just ask you, I think it would be nice just to tell them how the workshop will be run today. 
uh, if yes. that's okay. Um, so basically, I think we want to share with you, as Cecilia said, the great experience we had there in Prague, but also give you a chance to do the same exercise today together. So basically, so just you know where you are and everyone who will be seeing this afterwards, the recording, so you can understand how this will work. So Cecilia will introduce and present the, the things and the legacy of this manifesto workshop that happened in Prague. And you're gonna have access to the links with the toolkit and everything that is available on the Icon PR website afterwards. But then we will interview Eunice because Eunice was there with us. And Eunice Baez, she's coming representing Costa Rica experiences. And then she also will talk about the experience of the museum she works for. You can hear a little bit her experience. And right after you're gonna enjoy uh, the activity with us because we will invite you all to join us in a practice of how we do uh, this activity together. And you're gonna see the instruction on the chat. So that's the more or less how the things will work today. And we encourage all the participation on the chat or on the mic as well, if you feel like doing so. Excellent. Thank you, Lucy Mara. So just a recap of the presentation we shared back in the day on the 25th of August during a ICOM Prague and a conference of ICOM NPR. And the first question that we ask everybody was if you, and we ask you today, have you ever been engaged in a manifesto before? Because for some of us, this was the first time we did it. And we just said, no worries, trust the process. We got you back and we're just going to go together through it. Um, and we just explain everyone the intention because over the last days that proceed to the conference, we've been very excited about sharing the new museum definition, but this was the time to see what are we going to do with it? And is there a way that we can work together differently? We had been discussing up until that day the power of museums to inspire hope. There were very inspiring uh, presentations around this, that topic to engage in conversations and to take action. So for us and why we thought a manifesto, as many of you know, a manifesto, it has been critical in areas, sometimes in art, politics, but many other fields. And today also within, for example, the Museum Association, the Manifesto for Museum uh, Learning and Engagement. So it's a great way to have a set of belief, a set of ideas that drive a new vision, that drive change. And that is always uh, very often articulated by a group of progressive minds that bring it forward. So we thought this is an opportunity for us to work with the new museum definition and to embrace a new way of working. And what purpose does it serve? Well, we think that actually it's your actions that define you. So it's very well to have a definition. It's very well to have principle, but it's what you do and not what you say you will do that really defines you. So at ICOM NPR, we see ourselves not just as communicators, we see ourselves as change makers. We are in direct contact with our audiences and we don't want to just transfer information in a passive way. We see our audiences as active participators. So in order to do that, we have to embrace ourselves that mindset. So what did we do? What we did was quite simple in a way. We had um, a toolkit to drive action, a toolkit that as Lucy Mara already saw you, we're gonna share with you in case you want to implement it in your organization. And how we did it, what, we did it in three parts, just like a theater play. We said, okay, we create change together. Let's share our minds, let's share our thinking. Let's be agents of change. And let's first state what we believe in and what is the area we want to intervene. So we select one area from the manifesto, uh, from the new museum definition, but then we identify the barriers. However, because you don't identify the barriers, there is, it's not possible to drive change. And then together we identify the actions, the concrete actions that we were going to take collectively when we went back home to our museum. So we had, 
groups of five people. We had in total six groups and one coach per group. And each group selects one area they believe in. They, they decided which area they wanted to intervene. And we had people for, I don't know, uh, all over the world. And in total, 22 participants taking, taking uh, part of this activity. It was very heated discussions, very well moderated by the co-facilitators that led to areas and um, in which everyone decided in which area they were going to intervene. And about the new mission definition, I think, Lucy Mara, do you want to share some thoughts? Yes, I think you were explaining really well about the idea of the manifesto, looking at the actions and barriers when you are trying to implement change. But in the museum community now, we are all invited to implement change, having this vision of the new museum definition. So we have highlighted here some of the areas that are critical to museums professionals to think about how they want to implement change on being more accessible, more inclusive, having more diversity, um, driving change throughout sustainability, enjoyment, education, knowledge sharing, reflection, and very importantly, with the participation of the communities. So part of this whole idea of looking at barriers and actions, it's part of the daily life of the museums in the moment. And that's why we want to help you out can you show the next uh, next screen, Cecilia? So when you look yeah. at museums, it's for sustainability action, or museums is for diversity action, or for inclusion action. You can pick and choose what is the most important topic to com com in comparison to what the stage of the development for change that your museum is in now. And I think the next one, probably Cecilia, it's inclusion, diversity, and the next one, it's also looking to how the preservation in related to climate change and other topics that are important to your museum. And we are gonna look for now in the exercise, how you look into how the museum will face this challenge of implementing these new areas for the museum. So moving Thank back you. to your Cecilia. Yes, so when we had the areas defined and everyone could choose the one that they believed in, then we move into the second part, which was identifying the barriers and where we're feeling to start with. So we invited everyone to share knowledge and share what areas they felt they were um, important to identify as barriers, because although we believe in sustainability and all the other topics that Nusimara state, however, these are the things that are stopping us. And unless we recognize them, we won't be able to overcome them. So this is what people share, what they were feeling stuck with. And that uh, led to a list of barriers that was very comprehensive. And last but not least, we had the third part, which was the call for action of the things we were going to do and the actions we were going to take. And that led into four areas. It was about... Um, the belief of museums for enjoyment actions, for inclusivity, for sustainability, and for accessibility. And every team, and you can read more lengthily in the report if you wish to, uh, you can find it on our website, describe the barriers and the actions that they were going to take. So that was uh, after, that, after that, we signed the manifesto and have a bit of a historical moment. And as I say, we have representatives from museums from the whole world. The diversity in the room was incredible. And everyone had a very uplifting experience because it was, I don't know, the opportunity to really work together. And we want to embrace these methodologies more and more in every conference that we organize, but also online, because we don't have to wait until the conference to work together and to connect and to share knowledge and to drive change. So it was a clear, great pleasure to have um, also Elisa taking part, and I'm just going to give the word to uh, Lucy Maras so she can uh, interview her and she's going to share with us, you know, interesting findings of how it has been after that. And thank you for your attention. Well, I think it was really nice um, going through again what we did in Prague, because the whole idea is that you can lead this activity in your museum. 
So the framework and the toolkit of the manifesto is an inspiration for you to just take this toolkit and develop this with your team and your staff. Because when we did it, we also learned, as Cecilia was saying, that people were enthusiastically participating. That enjoyment was also important because those issues are complex. Yes, they're serious. But there's other ways, there are other ways we can find to engage the staff to learn and get together and collaborate to drive change. So I will introduce Elnisi and we will conduct, which is a quick interview we'll have here uh, together so we can have a concrete case of a museum and also her um, perspective on how it has been to implement these um, new areas in the museums, the actions, and the barriers. So without further ado, I will introduce Eunice. Eunice Baez, she's a communication strategist, writer, and content marketing specialist with emphasis in art, culture, and museums with a sustainable development focus. Currently, she's a co-chair at the Museum of Identity and Pride, the first LG PTBQI plus museums in the region. And she's also the chair of ICON Costa Rica, which brings us a perspective from other places and from Latin America as well. So professional training as an audiovisual producer, and she's also media manager, and she has been working with the arts and culture and heritage projects for quite a while. So Onisi, welcome. Thank you for being here today with us. She's a member of ICO NPR, I must say. <laughs> right? uh, thank you for having me. I must say that I um, I always say this, my first experience in ICOM and when I really understood the power of people from museums coming together was actually in Amsterdam at an NPR meeting. And there I kind of uh, figured how powerful it can be when people come together with ideas to share their experiences and their ideas. And I think that this uh, kind of um, shows in this methodology in Prague, there was all this buzz and all this, um, it was, the air was heavy with the decision of uh, deciding on the new uh, museum definition. And this is something that um, at the moment, now after, in the aftermath, it's easy to co go back, but in the moment it was heavy with the fact that what was going to happen. And luckily we got a positive, uh, uh, turnout on the on the museum definition and everyone was and everyone and it was approved but at some point this was not so clear so it was it was really uh just the day after the the um, it was approved we had this wonderful wonderful experience in this also wonderful space in Prague where we met and we had this amazing methodology where I got to sit with people from all over the world and we got really to get hands on the museum definition which which I think at some moment a definition looks like something that is really um like not not able you're not able to touch it and then when you bring it and uh, when you uh uh, bring it to your own experience and you share it you can see how it becomes real so i just wanted to say exactly. that before start. well this is exactly i think what we are looking for the link for what we'll be talking here it's how the museum of identity and pride is dealing with the museum new the new museum's definition implementation so I think the first question for you, Elnice, it's actually to ask you if you can tell us what are the key areas of the ICO Museum definition that are top priorities for, for the museum you are working with? And it could be for now, for the future, but also I would like you to reflect on how does that relate also to Costa Rica Museum. So if you can tell me both, uh, I think it would be nice. Yeah, um, if I would say the priorities, you know, in the Museum of Identity and Pride, um, it's pretty new. 
and it's also a museum that doesn't have like a physical space it's a group of people making a museum so that makes it even more challenging but also one of our main um fo uh, elements of topics of focus are exactly diversity and community participation which are the two areas that i also believe that are very challenging and that are and that must be important for other museums in Costa Rica. And I would say, and this is of course my very personal opinion, I would also say that in the region, these are challenging topics, how to bring diversity and how to bring community participation into the museum. Yes, and I understand what you mean because community participation has always been of course a topic for, for museums, but how you do this and how you allow these voices to influence our programming, your curatorship, it's another thing. And how yes. you create the diversity on the workforce of the museum, it's also another thing. So it's great that you, you brought this as a barrier because I have seen work with different museums that this is a, it's a, it's an issue or an area that is, it's also relevant and priority for many other museums. So tell me a little bit of the barriers and the challenge of implementing uh, these key areas, as you mentioned, diversity and community participation um, in the museum, but also, as I said, in a broader sense in Costa Rica, as you can see and you perceive on, on Costa Rica. Okay, with, let's say, for example, with community participation, I think there's a whole idea and I, I think this has to do with the, the, with the old, let's say old or, or outdated concept of what a museum does or is. Um, because I think there's, an, uh, one of the barriers is that there's a lot of, of uh, the concept that is like embedded on the museum that um that the museum gives to the community right and that the communities don't that the museum gives uh expositions or events or um uh, activities but the the museum cannot go into the in that the community cannot go into the museum and i think this is something that uh, at the museum of identity and pride we are having and we we have to change because it's actually an initiative that comes from a population from a group of people from a community that is the lgbtq community that actually needed a place right so it's actually but i believe that in my opinion in the in the region and i i would dare say that in a lot of museums this is a vision that doesn't allow uh, communities to go in. And with diversity, I also believe that it's kind of a fear and kind of a lack of knowledge um, related, but let's say that in this case, the barrier comes from outside. Like museums uh, lack sometimes diversity in their in their expositions or in what they give out uh, to the public because there's a fear that uh, it might actually um, go back into you. Or you might be criticized or that um, it might yeah go back to you and and affect the museum in itself. I think very personally, I think these are like the barriers for these well, two it, topics. It's nice to pause because by the time you are speaking, Cecilia is collecting your ideas for the toolkit mm -hmm. because this is the exercise that we are doing. You're going to see at the end, everyone who is uh, watching, how is the framework that we are proposing for reflecting as agents of change looking at the barriers that Eunice is pointing out. So if anything is missing, Cecilia, you let me know. But I think you, you phrased really well, Eunice, that on the first idea that you bring, lots of museums are working to or for the community, but not with the community, which is something different, right? Mm -hmm. It's this exactly this that I heard, I, I heard from you. I this, that, is, that is yes. just it. 
yeah. which is offering something that I, I think you, you need and I, I offer you, but it's not listening and working together to create something that actually they require or they can work with and develop together. So this is something. And the other thing you mentioned about the lack of knowledge and also the sense of fear, which is very much what museums professionals are, are relating and telling us about when they want to implement change, the barriers that they face as professionals internally. Right, so you brought both dimensions. I think one institutional and another on the personal level of the professionals as well. Um, is that right? Do you feel that this is a good reading of what you just said? Exactly, exactly, yes. Yeah. No, that's, that's great because it's similar to what other museums are facing. So tell us the good news about the actions. Um, so solutions, proposals, ideas that um, the Museum of Identity and Pride and also the museums in Costa Rica are doing in terms of uh, overcoming that bar these barriers and find creative uh, solutions. And even though they face the challenge, they are doing things that are creative and that can overcome those barriers. Yes. So, uh, for example, considering community participation, there is actually a very interesting project. Uh, which is a podcast at the Museum of Identity and Pride that it's called um, uh, Quiero Queer, that translates to I Want Queer. And it's actually a series of interviews to the communities, uh, to the people, to artists that are queer, or now we're on the third uh, season now, it's coming to a third season, and it's going to be related to all the drag community in Costa Costa Rica. So instead of giving this community a, a ready-made exposition or a ready-made um, project like a traditional idea of a museum would do, where we are working directly with the community and creating together uh, material and creating together content where the community is actually owning from the very start. So I think this is a way of creating content. A museum isn't always doesn't always have to give. It can build together with the communities <clears throat> that it, it it needs to reach in a way. So I think for community a participation and, and real engagement, this is a way. And for diversity, well, in the case of the Museum of Identity and Pride, diversity has been at, it, at its core from the very start. So I think this is another way, like putting in the core of what a museum is from the start, reviewing mission and vision of the museums, even if they are big state museums, reviewing what they are and how they look at the world from their even their main identity and really going to the basis of what a museum does is part of a way where you can really uh, change and go into the whole museum and really include diversity in everything that a museum does. And it's nice to hear your uh, perspective as well, because of course, the Museum of Identity and Pride has is a central part of its work to work with diversity and, and gender. And, but this is very important for all museums. I think in terms of driving change, we need to be all the museums inclusive in terms of uh, re reframing how we include uh, the diversity of gender, which is part of the United Nations agenda. And one of the social development goals is gender. And not only mm -hmm. women, but it's in a broader sense of the diversity of gender. So I think when we brought some ideas, it, they are also uh, inspiring for other museums and how they can work with gender diversity. Um, so I think it's really nice. I was just thinking here now, Cecilia, if you want to show or demonstrate the, the yes. summary of what Ionisi has just said. And thank you before. Gracias, Ionisi. For You're welcome, your, pura vida. 
your demonstration of this uh, museum and we are going to move on to the activity but first Cecilia will have a look on how the toolkit capture your ideas thank you thank you Erisi so I just put down with each of the areas that uh, we believe in museums for diversity where you shared with us on the fear of lack of knowledge and um, also the internal barriers and people need to see themselves reflected. We also talk, you talk about putting at the core of the mission and the values, the statements of um, this aspect of diversity and how they look at the world. So that's where everything, so this is one of the actions. And on the community, looking into working, not only for the community, but with the community. And also defining um, the definition of community and what they need in the place as one of the barriers and the action of uh, working with the community in the podcast that you spoke about, um, Quiero Queer, which is them deciding on the content and deciding and um, bringing it uh, together with interviews and artists. So this is a bit of a summary of how it actually, it's a very simple uh, three stages uh, manifesto toolkit. So we thought that um, in order to illustrate it with your interview, but it would be great if us as a group and everyone who joined it, we uh, take the challenge to go into, into and, and try to do it together. But in order to do that, what we need to do is to actually decide which are the beliefs or which areas we want to focus on. And to do that, uh, Luis is going to put in the chat to select those areas, he's going to put in the chat a um, voting um, link in which you can go and you can decide on the three areas that you like us to focus on and then we can see which one has the most votes. So, <clears throat> Luis, if you are happy to put the link on the chat, let me otherwise... I'm having a problem here. Does anyone have the link at hand? Oh, yeah, there it is. Link, so, the link is there, yes. Yeah. Great. So we just have to choose which areas we want to um, go for. And I will show as an example, I'm going to make my choice, which will be accessibility, sustainability, and diversity. So this, this yes. way. Should we choose yeah. three, three out of six? Should, should yes, we... three. three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're going to give a couple of minutes for everyone to choose, and then we will see which ones are going to come out. So in two minutes, we will close the poll. So it looks like um, accessibility is going first, followed by sustainability and community participation. So let's see. Um, I see the poll moving, the chart is moving. So, but we still have those top three. One more minute to go. Um, so everybody can vote. And this is a total experiment. We've never done this before. So but we thought it would be great to, it's always different when you have to translate it into the digital world, because normally when you are sitting together in the table, you know, you can use the different voting methods but as i always say nothing like democracy to make choices so let's see looks like uh, we've got three clear uh, winners so shall we go for accessibility sustainability and communities participation so i'm gonna go back to the mirror board and and reflect on choices on accessibility Participation and sustain sustainability was the second one. Sustainability. 
Cecilia, it looks like um, inclusivity would be next. Okay, inclusivity. Or enjoyment. They, they all got 18%. Okay, let's have a look. So um, on my list, it shows participate, accessibility, sustainability, and participation. No, participation got 14%, and then in diversity, 14%. Oh, sorry, yes, you're right. Okay, okay. yes. So let's just make, so so. Um, can you repeat it for me? Accessibility, Accessibility, right? yes. Sustainability, yeah. yes. Accessibility, sustainability, and let's go with inclusivity, inclusive. Okay. Yeah, and then um, let's go for... Inclusivity. Okay. Good. Great. Great. So um, let's start with accessibility then. Um, it'd be great to know from everyone who joined. And there is two ways we can do that. You can even put it on the chat, um, give in the heading and tell us what are the barriers? What are you feeling stuck with in within your museum um, it, to regards to accessibility? So, and we're gonna give it like, should we give it a couple of minutes? And Cecilia, I think whoever feels like uh, speaking on the microphone and just open the camera and speaking, that's fine as well. Yes, because please. we can hear you and collect ideas. Uh, just feel. Uh, just feel how you, you feel better just doing the chat or opening the mic about what are the, the barriers that you feel of implementing accessibility in the museums you work for or that you can see happening in the museums in general. Yeah, so we, we thought we facilitated it's possible for anyone who is more of a an introvert or an extrovert, you can write it on the chat, but if you feel like sharing with us verbally, that's also very welcome. For example, Arisa, do you have any points for, I see some familiar faces, Anna, hello. <laughs> if anyone wants to share. How about lack of knowledge? Yeah. Lack of information. I agree. Lack of information. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe something, hi, hi Celia, so nice to see you all again. Uh, yeah. Something that I think that is a bit of a barrier for accessibility is that such a broad topic that sometimes it feels overwhelming to mm. think about it as a whole. So you can have difficulties on accessibility on a physical level. So for example, you have uh, what are their um, architectural barriers. So you have too many stairs just like that's a very easy example, but also you can have a problem with accessibility with uh, regards to disabilities like hearing disabilities or um, mm -hmm. blind people. So it, it's a very broad topic and depending on where you want to look at the topic, if you just look at it and you just, it's too big to tackle. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. it's yeah, it's true. It's very big. It's very difficult to, yeah, to break it down. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, that's a very good point. Anyone? Think, to, yeah. Cecilia, if you can zoom out on accessibility just for us to look and yeah. post it, I think it would be nice. And I think I just want to contribute also with accessibility that the lack of uh, people with disabilities in, in the staff it's a barrier because they are the focus people who know exactly what we should do. So there is always this um, this phrase that we say nothing about us without us. So I think yes. this is one thing which the, the big barrier is not having people with disability in the staff. So I would say this. Yes, also because sometimes if you don't have people with disability in the staff, you don't even see the problem. I mean, for example, my roommate 
has some site problems, like serious site problem. And she visited the, the exhibition I work at and she told me something that, for example, the subtitles on some videos were too small for her to read. And that didn't, didn't even compute for me. I mean, that was not a problem in my just world view. So yes, talking to people who know what they're saying is fundamental. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, no needs to do you want to add? I see yes, your hands yes. on, and then we will look at the actions. Go ahead. Yes, exactly. Just as uh, Anna said, uh, you don't even know it. And just as Lucimara said, if you don't include people from the start, uh, and sometimes even it could come out like a really, like have a good in intention, right? Mm -hmm. It can come out with a good intention, but since you're not doing it, including the community that has, uh, that is not included, then you you do it wrong because then you, I remember at a museum, people doing ramps for, for, for the for people with wheelchairs or uh, disability like uh, body disability problems but then they didn't ask somebody with a real disability to try it out or to do suggestions on the space before they did it so the ramps were in like this and so <laughs> there was no way a person with a wheelchair would go up, mm. up close right and it's just like Anna said you don't even know it because you don't, you have to do it with the community that is involved and that has the problem, the not the problem, but that has to deal with it uh, in yeah. our space that we're creating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely, yeah. That seems like this should be the most important thing, but you know, it doesn't make sense to make those decisions without including the community. Yeah. Cecilia, perhaps we should listen now some actions, or if, yeah. if everybody feels that contributed with accessibility, or yeah. Yasmina, do you want to say something? I, I I thought I saw you saying something. You, you were unmuted. sorry, sorry, yeah, I had to uh, unmute. Uh, yeah, because I'm coming from Serbia and from one museum that is really uh, accessible. I mean not completely accessible, but we are uh, doing uh, uh, for a very long time, since 2010, uh, working with a community from different uh, disabilities mm -hmm. and for them, with them, for them. Uh, so it, everything that you said is actually true. Uh, I mean, lack of uh, architecture, <laughs> architectural space uh, actually, uh, really put us in a difficult position to give the opportunity for everyone. Can you hear me? Actually, I'm gonna have to ask. Yeah, yeah, okay. yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yes. Uh, that's that's one thing. That's uh, that hmm. because most of the museums are part of uh, our cultural heritage as themselves, and then you mm -hmm. have to be very careful how to you. Uh, not not to disturb the the space and the uh, and to make all these uh, well for us we are a classical museum uh, gallery uh, and uh, how not to to how to share the experience in their way not in our way for example for people with uh, uh, hearing uh, disabilities or visual disabilities that's that was that's our question for like a very long time and we are we are having a lot of actions mm -hmm. that are already proved to be uh good but certain things we cannot do because of the mm -hmm. finances finances are always like first thing uh, like when it comes uh we know finance would be one of the barriers you mean yeah yeah and I mean, this lack of understanding uh, that most people uh, in museum community uh, maybe see uh, in Serbia, I think that we are really working uh, on uh, bringing, uh, making a museums for all. That's mm -hmm. our goal. That's kind of the topic that we are within the uh, museums in, uh, but 
I think that to support, you know, to, to have actual uh, websites for uh, all the community, you know, for people that uh, can uh, read uh, in a way they want to, how to uh, integrate all the topics that they are interested in. That's kind of really a wide, wide board. Uh, oh, well, kind of, we, and you cannot uh, satisfy everyone. That's kind of mm -hmm. also a thing. Uh, yeah. I mean, you, you, you can reach some, you have to know where are the, the uh, not really barriers, but uh, like levels uh, on, the, on a different communication, you know. One is space uh, within the museum. Something else is through the channels, they know, they following. Uh, so kind of so many things that can be done and that are, uh, are done. So mm -hmm. from, my, from my side that much. So thank you. Thank you, Yasmina. I, I hope I am pronouncing you. Pronouncing yes, I'm Yasmina. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, thank yes, you. Yes. Um, I think you, you brought a similar sense of what people were saying about the difficulties in the museums in different levels. I just want to mention two uh, things on the chat, Cecilia. Uh, Antonio is mentioning an action, which is actually, yeah. he said, he's working on interactive education yeah. tool to overcome this matter, which I think it's nice. Perhaps he wants to share. Uh, Antonio, I don't know if you want to talk more about this action, the interactive tool. Which is, it's a nice, it's an action, right? To overcome this barrier. Yeah. We still can't hear you, though. No. Yeah, it's problem. The... Antonio, is your, mic turned, is your mic turned on? It's mute. It's mute, Pro probably is the microphone, Antonio? Yeah, it's the microphone. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And I can see in the meantime, Christiana is saying, can you please let me in? Christiana, I, we see you in the room. Do you want to talk and open your mic? I didn't quite understand. If you want to jump in the discussion, just feel welcome. I can see you here in the room. Hmm. Anyone else like to share another action? For accessibility. Okay. I think, I mean, Cecilia, one clear one is inviting and bringing uh, people with disability to join your staff, your workforce, because exactly. we mentioned the barrier, yeah. but the solution is to, in, to proactively yeah. hire people, actually, and having a, a forum of discussions and debate with people with disability. I would say this is the first one. Maybe also yeah. if you cannot hire people with that disability, I mean, I'm thinking about people with autism or other cognitive uh, uh, disorders, maybe they cannot uh, actually be part of the workforce because that would be too stressful for them, but you can consult them when you design mm -hmm. your exhibition. Yeah, yeah. Very good point. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, all professionals. Who are working, you know, directly with them, professors, etc. You know, uh, psychologists, uh, people who are uh, maybe not directly uh, uh, disabled, but you know, professionals within a team. Uh, every single team is the most valuable tool that you can get. Mm -hmm. So, professionals. Yes, for example, in Italy, there are a lot of organizations that uh, work with parents, especially with the children of children with disabilities, especially cognitive disabilities. And they maybe you can work with these uh, educators to bring their own how they interact with these children and who will become adults and uh, how which are the methods that are most effective to uh, to, to talk to them. Just like yeah. trying to find a common language, basically. Yeah, yeah. I think one that. more thing is having an open mind. Um, give people an opportunity to step up to the plate. Don't underestimate people's potential. I went to uh, the Phillips Museum in Washington the other day, the Phillips Collection, 
And we were greeted by this woman and she was kind of very, um, it was interesting. It was an interesting communication. And then we went through and we said, that was interesting. That was odd. You know, then we went and we left. And then later on, I was waiting for my friend and I had another conversation with her and I realized, oh, she's autistic. And then mm -hmm. sometimes it's okay, you know, because I think we have, um, it's good for people to discover on their own sometimes how to work with each other. You know, it's okay mm -hmm. for people to have mm -hmm. new experiences and we shouldn't be afraid of that, those encounters. Mm -hmm. Let people, mm -hmm. not just your staff or your volunteers, let them step up to the plate and let your, let your visitors step up to the plate too. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yes, and contributing to that, Deborah, I remember a festival in the UK called Unlimited which is all delivered by people with disability. And the experience from the museums and arts organization is that when they invited them to contribute to a specific program, they also learn from them solutions for, for other issues they have yeah. in the museum. Right. It's very common because they have a different perspective. They look at things in a different way. So they're there being consulted just for accessibility, but then they learned much more about creativity and how they feel about education programs. So it goes beyond that, which I think is great. Yeah. Good. That's great. Um, thank you, everyone. Should we move into a uh, the uh, new? Yeah. Great. Let's do. Let's go for sustainability. Your favorite topic, the Samara. You're a total expert on this subject. So, um, what are the barriers that we are? I think one of the barriers is like the lack of skills. Um, I don't know if you you agree, but like lack of skills, everyone is like. But how do we implement it? And what are the skills that we need? And how we can escalate it? What are the barriers any, everyone is seeing in the group that we feel? I, I, I would add to the lack of skills also the lack of understanding because it's a concept that is so much thrown about. Like everything yeah. now is sustainability. You buy sustainable chicken or <laughs> sustainable, you have a sustainable car and then you have a sustainable museum. And so it kind of... Uh, it has lost a little bit of what it really means. So I find mm. that the concept has become like so marketed that mm. it, it people just use it in everything, right? Yeah, absolutely. I agree. And one of the things that we feel working with museums is that there is a misconception that sustainability is only related to environmental issues. And when we are talking about social sustainability, things that we just talk about on accessibility, they are all part of the sustainability. So I think this is one thing. It's a misconception what sustainability means and, and encompass. I think this is one thing as well. Mm -hmm. What else? Anna, Antonio, um, Yasmina, anything else you feel about the, the barriers um, of implementing sustainability museums? Something is still about architecture. I'm thinking about it. How you do you bring a, like an, an old building? How do you make it that more sustainable? And you have to deal with all of the um, constraints that you have from, uh, you know, because it's an historical building, you cannot do some things that might make it more sustainable. For example, uh, new windows, by any, uh, just like, that's an example. So that would make uh, energy consumption for heating less, uh, but that's maybe that's not something that you can do. And so, navigating the sustainability in the sense of yeah environmental sustainability and how you uh work with the existing building and the existing material that you have and how you adapt it to the new world mm -hmm. it's true and it's a big challenge for the heritage sector 
I think you are quite right. And I think this requires a lot of creativity. Uh, and it's, it's, it's funny though, that some museums start implementing new wings that are very sustainable because they're incapable of doing the, the main building sustainable enough. Uh, but it's something that we need to, to still learn and requires, of course, specialists who are dealing with this. Um, yeah, but it's absolutely. it's a it's a critical issue, and I think you are right. Absolutely, so something for example that the museum I work at they did for it to be more sustainable on an, an environmental sense, they decided to uh, buy electricity just from uh, certified green uh, um, sources, for example. And that I work at the Procuratia Vecchia; it's in the heart of Venice. You cannot build anything new, basically. So a new wing that a new wing that's super super sustainable that's not feasible, but you can do something else. And yes, it does require require creativity. So for example, okay, I need electricity. I can buy electricity just from sustainable sources, and that's something you can do, and it's relatively easy to do. Mm. I think it yeah. takes I think it takes research, a dedication. Maybe it's the next thing. But what you were leading yeah. to, I think, is we all have to do more research. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. To find the answers in this new era. Yeah. Yes. You Any have other to think about outside of the box. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Antonio says financial sustainability. Mm -hmm. And and also I think. Once again, it's uh, also um, learning from communities or uh, reaching out to, to other voices that are like in communities. For example, um, indigenous communities and uh, like uh, ancestral knowledge and thinking about the, the uh, Latin America and, for example, sustainability of collections, you can really ask the communities who made the objects originally. <laughs> they probably know more about how mm. to keep them or how to, to keep a space than uh, yourself, right? And so yeah. I, think, I think a lot of the of this knowledge, you don't even ask, right? You don't even ask them the people who are, uh, who have the, who created the knowledge in the first place. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, I think Yonisi brought the action, right? You are doing both barriers and actions already. I think one barrier, Cecilia, is the fact that uh, museums do not recognize is their role to work in sustainable development. I think this is mm. this is a critical thing. We are taking a while for museums to start working with climate change mitigation, for example, because they mm. think in general, in the majority, it's a role that should be played by the NGOs and nonprofit organizations working on the environmental issues. So I think it's a shift of mindset. So a big barrier is not recognizing the role of museums on sustainability as a whole. So, mm -hmm. Well, that's yeah. great. I think we fill out this very well, right? Yeah, I think that's really good. Do we have time for one more? Yes. Do we? Let's do this together. Are you okay, okay. on doing another one? And inclusivity? Guys, in my case, I sadly have to go. But oh. it was a pleasure and thank you for having me and I listened to the rest of the event because I find it really impressive. So congratulations. So I'll leave now, but thank you for everything. Thank you, Risi, for joining thank you, in. Amici. It's been great having thank you. you. Yes. So about inclusivity, what do you think are the key barriers? I think the mindset. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right. I don't know. The mindset. Yeah. Yeah, the mindset that you are not all knowledging. I mean, uh, you can have areas that you don't know, and talking to people who actually know it's not a crime, it's actually very welcome. 
Yeah. Yeah. Acknowledging, acknowledging our limitations and yeah. I think we are still facing uh, the problem of uh, preconceived ideas and bias towards um, diversity in general, but because we're talking about inclusivity, it's very hard to overcome um, change that requires, um, change that are required inside the museums to welcome um, diversity. So it's hard to develop inclusivity once museums are not um, capable of implement change that requires to listen different people, different profile, different ways of engagement. So I can I can give an example. So the Museum of uh, Indigenous Cultures in Brazil is a recent museum, and is the first museum in the state of São Paulo that it's co-managed by Indigenous representatives. It's very hard. It is a wonderful case of inclusion, but it's very hard because the process and the systems that Indigenous communities work are different from uh, the main. Um, let's say the state in Brazil, which, um, um, and how, how they work. So I think it, it requires change on the way we work in the museums when you want to mm -hmm. be inclusive. It requires some change in process, change in, in bureaucratic things. So I think it's, 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 it's a barrier in terms of if we are willing to make change, but it's also uh, important to, to to, to think that it will require change to, to be inclusive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and be ready for it. Uh, flexibility. Uh, yeah. People need to be more flexible. It's not my way or the highway. It's um, maybe another way of doing things. Yeah. And Cecilia, Anna has said on the chat that the yeah. lack of museum specialists in the area of providing services to meet inclusivity, I think it's also important. Yes, she just yeah. mentioned the chat. Thank you, Anna. Let's move into the actions. Talking with people who knows, acknowledging that the lack of knowledge, what else can we do? I think in the same way that Anna, Anna, go ahead, perhaps you Yeah, was probably yeah. <laughs> the same thing. I mean, the same way that you have to talk with people who yeah. have disabilities for diversity, uh, we were talking about diversity, you have to do exactly the same thing for inclusivity. You have to hire people from marginalized communities or from people who have not been uh, represented historically in the museum sector. You have to hire them and give them a voice. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, I'm a white woman. My voice has been heard pretty much um, a lot. I mean, less than a white man, but still, I mean. Exactly, yeah. I highlight that. Hmm. So see any, any other action? Oh, Christian, I see you now. I'm glad. Hello, <laughs> sorry, I was actually on commute, that's why I couldn't really communicate properly. Okay. Ah. Well, that's great. Do you want to add any action for this uh, inclusivity issue in the museums? Do you want to add something on this point? I was actually mainly like observing, but you know, like, I mean, my main question is how actually do we define inclusivity? Mm. You know, this is a big question. I mean, what does inclusivity uh, means for like every museum? And uh, how like are we distinguishing like the practices within inclusivity? Mm -hmm. So perhaps one barrier is um, how museums and museums professionals have defined inclusion. Mm -hmm. Because this is a deep discussion that goes beyond the museum sector that United Nations is defined what is equity, what is equality, and equity is different from equality and inclusion, it's part of this equation, right? And are we talking about gender? 
Are we talking about indigenous communities? Are we talking about minorities? What are we are talking about? I think perhaps this is what you were bringing um, to our discussion from my understanding. And, and also uh, inclusion could mean the language that you use to communicate in the museum, which is very much on the remit of ICO and PR, um, the communications, or it could be also how we prepare the security to receive the audience. And it, it also includes on how we communicate on digital media. There's so many things in inclusion, but I think mm. it's an important route for each museum to go and do their mind map about inclusion. Um, but I think you're quite right. It's a broader concept. It needs to be well-defined. Yes, and also mm. like, I mean, I feel like, you know, there's some reflection and also, it's very interesting how actually inclusivity changes across geographies. Yes, obviously, true. like uh, museums in different like cities and uh, territories and places, you know, they think of inclusivity in different ways. So yes, I'm I'm bringing this more like philosophical perspective of uh, inclusivity into like uh, the manifestation of uh, of yes of uh, what we you were discussing. Yes, I'm just putting here the link to the toolkit for all of you to understand what Cecilia is just summarizing on the board. You all can have access. You all can have a uh, specific access to the tools to develop on your museum. So if you look at this handout that it's on the ICO NPR website, you can print it and do on, on in person with your staff, your groups, of uh, colleagues in your museums, right, Cecilia? Exactly. So you can just we design it in a way simple to use, and you can organize an activity and get everyone around the table, and maybe also, as you already suggested, involve people from those communities that you want to give them a voice in order to together identify those barriers and identify action. So it could be a very simple toolkit to activate this kind of discussions in groups and evolving communities. So we will be also sharing with you the board with the outcome of a session together, which we thank you very much for taking part. It's been really, really interesting discussion and very fruitful, I, I have to say. Yes, and I also thought that you brought different perspectives of um, gender, geography, depend on where you are, and also different perspectives from what is your role in the, the museum sector. I, I felt that the, the points that you brought had this diversity. But the main point mm -hmm. today was to ensure that you have access to this toolkit. You know how to go at the ICO and PR and find it how to develop and continue doing this in your museums. And I think you will announce, Cecilia, the next webinar for them. Is that OK? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. I yeah, go for it. Yeah. No, you can go for it. Do you still have a, a, a wrap up of the exercise? Do you want to? No, I just want to say that thank you very much because we think that one of the things we embrace is participation. And this is an excellent example of the rich, richness that it brings and how it drives action. Because with all of you here from different countries with different realities, we have a much better picture and uh, we need those platforms to collaborate together yeah yes. and then thank you again so all over for you Lucy Mara if you want to talk about the next episode yes for sure I think it would be very nice for you um, to have a chance to understand that this is a series of uh, webinars and you can see on the chat that Deborah has shared about the next uh, episode that we are doing um, this has been developed with a committee from ICO and PR, and it's going to, it has been great that they have invited us to participate. And I want to tell you that the next one is in May 23rd. It's going to be at 4 p.m. UTC. We have invited Daniel Wall. Daniel is an um, important um, person who has been an author of Designing Regenerative Cultures. And it's basically a specialist who has been reflecting on how regeneration is an important topic for museums, especially for bioregional 
uh, influence and change. So we're gonna have a conversation. It's going to be a debate and interview with Daniel. And I think it's important because we'll be celebrating, as you know, the International Museums Day from ICON. And it's basically the topic that we're talking about well-being and sustainability covering three United Nations goals is something that Daniel has been working a lot. So we are bringing a specialist that works more in the environmental field but has been working a lot on the intersectionality between arts and culture and heritage throughout the lenses of regenerative culture. So how can museums act as catalysts for social and environmental change by creating regenerative cultures in their territories with their communities and the, the people they serve? And how museums can take their responsibility to collective create sustainable futures and promote well-being for all. So I really would like you all to come and you're going to have here in the chat a link for subscribing. It's already open. You can already subscribe for that one and please promote it. And we want to have a fruitful discussion with your experience as well of how it is to create not only sustainability but regeneration of the territories that we all need for the contemporary issues we are living. So come with us. And follow ICO NPR on the Instagram, on the website, on the Facebook, because it helps us a lot to promote this web series. Right, yeah. Deborah, Louise, Marcel, I thank you very much, you both, uh, who have been inviting us for this discussion today as well. Yes, and thank you for being pioneers, because this was the first edition. So yeah. this is the way we can make change. Thank you for joining. Hope to see you again soon. We gotta keep it going. Thank you. Right. Thanks for coming. Well, maybe we Thank you all. Just Thank to you, say Pam. very quickly, this will be recording and will be shared. And you can share with your staff and colleagues the recording for spreading the message. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, 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 Deborah. Bye. Thank bye. You. bye. Take care. See you soon. Okay. Till the next one.